In this video, we're going to be building a Facebook style like button, which we can see here if I just zoom in. And there's quite a few elements to this. So um, if you're new to CSS or you're new to more advanced sort of CSS3 features, we're going to go ahead and look at a few things here. We've got gradients and we're going to be using a gradient generator for this just to make our life a little bit easier. Um, we're going to have a little bit of border radius here. And uh, we obviously have the text here with a little bit of shadow. So no images used or anything like that. We're just going to you know, focus on pure CSS here. So we'll be building this up from scratch. You can use your own color scheme. So I'll show you uh, how we're generating the gradients. So you can just use your own colors here. Uh, we've also got this sort of hover effect as well while maintaining the gradient. So let's go ahead and build this up from scratch. Okay, so the only thing that we're starting with here is just a basic document layout. And you can see that I've linked in this main.css style sheet. So we'll start with the markup for this. This is going to be an anchor because presumably you're going to want someone to be able to click it. So let's create just an anchor element here where we've got an href attribute, which I'm just going to set to a hash for now because I don't really want it to link anywhere for the purpose of this tutorial. And we're going to give it a class so we can target the styling. So I'm just going to call this like hyphen button. So that's pretty much all we need to do. The only thing left is just to fill this in. Now it's important that we do this because if, for example, the styles can't be rendered, we still want this to look like a normal link, like so. We don't want to do anything like with CSS or JavaScript and inject this in or add any additional markup. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to enter the text in there and it just is pretty much like a normal link. So like I said, if the styles can't be rendered, you still have a perfectly valid link. So what I'm going to quickly do is just set the font family on the body. Um, I'm just going to set this to Arial for the sake of the tutorial, but uh, you're probably using a better font on your site, um, depending on how you're doing that. Um, so let's go ahead and target this like button. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the background uh, gradient for this, just so we can sort of see where we stand. Then we'll add the padding and change the font size and add the color of the text and things like that. But the first thing we need to do is uh, effectively just generate a gradient here. Now I'm using um, Colorzilla's gradient editor, which basically will give you the CSS for pretty much support for lots and lots of browsers. And then it will give you a uh, older browser fallback where you just get the background color. So that's really important because otherwise, say you had some white text and these uh, gradients couldn't be generated, you know, your users may not see it if it's on a white background. So I'm over on the developers uh, section on Facebook and I'm basically going to just steal the color palette from here. Probably not a good idea if you're using this for something that's going live. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to choose the colors from this button. Now to do that, I am going into, uh, I'm going into developer tools by inspecting this particular element. And you can see that here we have the actual code for the gradient. Now I'm not going to steal this code. What we're going to do is just steal the colors. So you can see here we've got a WebKit linear gradient. This is basically the starting color and this is basically the ending color here. So we can take these and we can copy them. So I'm copying the first one and then inside of our uh, gradient editor here, I'm going to choose a gradient that just ha basically has a, a one point to an end point. So we click on this one and we can choose the color we want here. So let's just get rid of this and paste that in. So that's our first color. And then for the end, we already know that it's this one. So we grab this and we go over to here and we basically just paste this in here. And there we go. So that now is the preview for our gradient. We want it vertical. I'm going to hit this handy copy button. That's going to copy all of that to the clipboard. You don't have to include all of this, to be honest, and it'd be a good idea to go ahead and look at what you do need. Um, in this case, we're basically supporting uh, vendor prefixes for all browsers. And then we've got an IE uh, support here using a filter. Um, and then, like I said before, we've got a fallback for older browsers, which is basically the start color. So if, for example, all of this didn't work, you would still be left with a valid piece of CSS um, that set the background for older browsers. So let's take a look at this in the browser and see what it looks like. Cool. So it's, it's looking OK, but obviously we can do better here. So what we need to do is up here, I'm just going to set some basic styles. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is set a display of inline block. And that's because I want to add things like padding to it, but I want this to sit in line with other elements on the page. 
Uh, let's go ahead and change the color of this as well, just so we can see it a little bit better. And now let's add some padding, just so we pad that out and the text isn't sitting exactly against the edge of the container. Now for padding, we have uh, north, east, south and west values. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to use the shorthand and I'm going to say I want the 5 pixel padding on the top and the bottom of the element and I want 8 pixel on the left and the right. This is basically what this means. So 5 pixels on the left and right and 8 pi uh, sorry on the top and bottom and 8 pixels on the left and right and that gives us the following. So it's already looking a little bit nicer, a little bit better. So we want to get rid of that underline because we don't really want the underline. It, it sort of looks like a button or at least it will by the end of the tutorial. So we want to say text decoration and we want to set that to none. Okay, so now let's change the font size. So we'll do 0.8M and that just reduces that font size down a little bit. So it's already looking pretty cool. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can do the shadow and the border radius and just make sure we uh, get this looking how we need. Uh, it's a good idea to zoom in when you're doing things like this. Um, so let's quickly set the border radius. This is really, really simple and uh, nowadays doesn't really require a vendor prefix. And uh, if this obviously isn't supported, it will just fall back to uh, square. And that doesn't really matter, to be honest, as long as it's functional. So the next thing we need to focus on is the text shadow. So if we head over to the like button on Facebook and I just zoom in a little bit, oh, not on there, if we just zoom in a little bit on here, you can see if I just scroll down and pull this down that we have a shadow that sort of just, its, it's um, position is just up a little bit. It doesn't come outwards or anything like that. So we're going to emulate that down here. So we say text shadow, this is really, really simple. We have an X and Y offset. So in this case, the X offset is going to be zero. Remember, it just sits, if we go back to it, it just sits uh, at zero on there. And the Y offset, we want that to go up a little bit. So we can say minus one pixel. The spread is how this um, spreads out, or blurs out. And we're going to set that to zero because we want that to be quite a harsh line. And then we're going to use the RGBA function to basically set this color to black. But then for the last one is the alpha channel. We're going to set that to 0.2. So we basically have a black shadow, but then we have it at 0.2. So it's, it's sort of um, not full, not fully black. If we didn't have that, and um, perhaps we just use the RGB function, we get the following. So it doesn't look as good. I mean, you could have it like this, of course, but uh, we want it to look like an actual shadow like that. So now that we've got that, we've pretty much created the button. It looks pretty good. Uh, you could add a little graphic there if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Now, the last step is to actually add the, when we hover over the button, we can see that on Facebook, when I hover over this, it goes a little bit lighter. The, the gradient's sort of maintained, but it goes a little bit lighter. So we're going to use um, the developer tools just to basically, if we just zoom out a little bit on here, just to basically, when you inspect this element, we're going to go up to this uh, part here, which is where the um, gradient is set. And I'm going to toggle, if I click on this just here, we click hover, and that's toggled that hover state. You can see that now this has the lighter color. And we can actually grab the colors from this as well. So for the linear gradient, we have this. So we're going to go back to our uh, gradient generator. And I'm going to set the initial color to that one I've just grabbed from there, so it's a little bit lighter. And then we have this one here. So we can go ahead and just add this one on here as the ending. And there we go, we've done exactly the same thing, but for the hover state on that element. Uh, of course, probably best to use your own color palette for this. So now we want to say, well, like button on hover. So we use the hover pseudo element. And we're just gonna paste that in so all of the other properties here will remain. So for example, all of these will stay the same. All we're basically overwriting or changing are these colors here. So now when we hover over, we get that lightened effect. So there we are. We've built a Facebook style like button with CSS. Really, really straightforward and uh, will fall back and look fine on older browsers.